Today, I'm analyzing a Dewey Don't Crap system, and I'll be giving it a true score rating at the end of this video. That way, you'll know if this system is right for you, although I'm not sure that I would recommend it. My name is Matt, and I can predict how you're going to do at the casino. Today's experiment is very simple. It's just $100 on the pass line and another $100 on the don't pass. When one bet wins, the other bet loses, except when a 12 is rolled. Then the pass line loses, but the don't pass, it only pushes, so it's not going to win or it's going to lose. That means the casino is going to win $100 from you when that happens. Now, 12 boxcars is relatively rare. It's only one out of every 36 rolls. But this did get me thinking, how often is that actually going to happen? And how much could you really lose if you played this strategy? So I programmed 100,000 bots to find out. We're going to see all kinds of data today. But first, let's examine why would anybody even want to play this? What if you wanted to shoot the dice without risking much money? Maybe you're a place better, but you also like to shoot the dice and you can't shoot the dice without having a line bet. If you do like to do that, let me know in the comments how you play and I might simulate it in a future video. Now let's dive in and look at some data. Here's the simulation report. There's over 40 pages of data here, so I can't cover everything in the video, but if you do want to dig deeper, you can read this report at thinktank.dicedata.info. We're going to start off looking at the simulation parameters. We had 100,000 bots. We played 10 hands per bot. That's a million hands total. Eight and a half million throws the dice. Very, very simple. It's just a $100 pass line, $100 don't pass. That's all the bets are doing in this simulation. Let's see what the house edge is. Here are the house metrics. The bots bet $505 million. You can see they won and they lost. House made about $7 million off of these 100,000 bots. And that's an overall edge of 1.383%. It's exactly right in between the theoretical edge of the pass line and of the don't pass. This section has the outcomes for individual hands. Now a hand is like one shooter, right? One shooter's turn with the dice from when they first get the dice to when they seven out. Winners, 0%. You cannot win with this strategy. This is not a winning strategy. It actually broke some parts of my report because of that. The reason it doesn't win is because everything is a push except for that 12 on the come out rolls. And that 12 on the come out rolls is gonna lose $100. So 93.5% pushes, 6.5% losers. Now, this one surprised me, right? Why is this 6.5%? The chances of throwing a 12 is only 2.7%. It's one out of every 36. So why is this 6.5%? Well, the reason for that is because most shooters are going to have, on average, more than one comeout roll. Each individual comeout roll has a 2.7% chance of having a 12. But each shooter has multiple come out rolls. On average, the shooters are going to have two and a half come out rolls times one out of 36 is about 6.9%. Now, this came in a little bit lower. Of course, it is a simulation. This is not the exact numbers. This is what happened for 100,000 bots. So it came in a little bit lower. The theoretical average, 6.9% of shooters, you're going to lose at least $100 here. But you can actually lose a little bit more. And we can see that if we look at the profit and loss. Typical, of course, it's gonna be zero. Uh, even very lucky is gonna be zero, the most is gonna be zero. But unlucky, that's the 95th percentile. The most that any bot lost for a single shooter was $400. Average is just seven though, because of course, most of the time it's going to push. You can see this in the chart format here. Here is the um, zero line. Most of the time it's going to be zeros. Uh, about 6% of the time, it was the $100. Less than 1% of the time, it was the two, three, and $400 losses. Most of the time, we don't play for just one shooter, though. So I had the bots play for 10 shooters, roughly on average an hour of play, something like that. Now, 50.9% of those are pushes. 49.1% are losers. So this is pretty high. The more chances you have, the more chances you have to lose. Let's jump straight to the distribution. Look at this. 51%, those are those zeros. 33% is a loss of $100. 12% a loss of $200. 3% a 
$300. Then we start getting below 1% for $400, $500, $600, and $700. I did this in $100 increments, so it's easy to kind of scale to whatever you're playing at. So imagine that you're at a $15 table. You can multiply that by 7. The maximum loss, what is that? 105, right? And at a $25 table, excuse my handwriting, times 7, uh, what is that? One. 175. So that's the maximum loss. And of course, if you were doing this as a shooter, you're not going to have the dice every time unless you're at an empty table. So the numbers might actually come in a lot less for this. So it might still make sense if you do want to be a shooter, but there is no way to win <laughs> and there's only ways to lose. And losing is way more frequent than expected. I mean, almost almost half the time this strategy is going to lose over 10 shooters and of course if we go longer it's going to lose even more frequently we're going to see this a little bit later in the video let's check out the bankroll a uh, typical bankroll that you need is 200 dollars. it's you need enough money to be able to make those first two bets right the pass line and the don't pass at 100 dollars each um even the the unlucky bots are $300, very unlucky $400. The absolute maximum was $900 that was required to be able to play this strategy. Betting power is where this strategy really shines. For every $100 that we outlay, the bots made 1872 in total bets. So it's a it's definitely a strategy that can keep you at the table for a very long time. There's not you know, it, it does lose, but it recycles the money quite a bit. And we're going to see that when we get into the true score ratings, you're going to see what effect that has. It's going to make it really great for the comp grinder. So most of the other charts that I show you, we're going to skip over because they're not very interesting with the strategy. They're pretty much zeros. You're not going to move. You're not going to be able to make money. You're not going to recover. You're not going to uh, give back anything because there's no money to give back. Look at this, all zeros. But we like to do multiple casino visits. And what we can look at is how much money the bots lost over multiple casino visits up to 500 times. This is the chart. This blue area is the middle 95% and the dashed area is 100% of the bots. And if we look at the actual numbers, now we saw this here. After one visit, the worst was up to $700. After 500 visits, just playing this strategy wrote, the best, the best bot you know, that did the best on a single session and then did that 500 times, lost $27,000. The worst bot lost $43,600. And the typical number, $35,000 lost when playing this strategy over 500 visits, 10 shooters each time. Here is the true score report. Now, house edge, low, 1.38%. It's pretty good. It's a line bet. Some of the best bets that you can make in the entire casino. The profit and loss balance, absolutely zero upside. There is no chance to win with the strategy. Volatility, very smooth. You're basically going to break even on almost every single roll. Jackpot factor copped. You cannot win money here. But betting power is marathon. So you can stay at the table for a very long time. So only the comp grinder gets any kind of stars here, and that's really because of this betting power. The bankroll requirements, $300 is usually sufficient. $400 is nearly always sufficient if you want to play at the $100 level. If you were playing at a lower level, just multiply your base bet by four, and that should be enough to keep you in the game. And of course, that's if you're playing this over and over again for 10 shooters. In reality, you might not be doing that. By the way, do you ever wonder how you're going to do in the casino? Like what's a typical or a really great win or what kind of risk you're taking or what bankroll you need? I also do custom simulations so you can get this report for the way that you play. Most people go to the casino with just hope, but you're going to have data. The link is in the description below. So that's all I have for you today. Let me know in the comments whether you would play a Dewey Don't and if you would add odds or do anything other crazy with, with this one. I would love to hear it. And as always, have great luck at the tables and thanks for watching.